I was always singing, always singing, and like, you know, out in pubs and things. And then, um, me mate who used to play football with years ago, got in touch with me and um, said he was playing, you know, wanted to form a band. So we formed a band um, with a couple of other lads. Um, and that's when I started writing songs, when I was about 25, 26. Um, and sort of went on my own after about four or five years of that because they didn't want to go out and gig. So I went on my own, um, had to play the guitar. So I picked the guitar up and learned loads more. And then got a keyboard in my flat and stuff and then just wrote the songs from there. Yeah. Will you come see me tonight? I show Uh, my name's Bill Bates, I'm a singer-songwriter. Uh, when did you meet Matt? Uh, I met Matt years ago. Uh, we was in a pub, which is most unlike Matt, and uh, it was uh, an open mic night, and this young whippersnapper came on the stage and started playing, and everyone was like blown away. And I went up to him afterwards and said, Matt, you know, um, whose songs were they? And he said, they're my own. And I just gobsmacked, absolutely gobsmacked, and I've followed his career uh, um, for years. And from then on, you uh, obviously you started working with him, and he did a couple of songs in his uh, first album, Three Chords and the Truth. Yeah, Can you just talk right. a little bit about that? Well, yeah, it was, it was like uh, typical Matt. He'd rung me up last minute and said, uh, Matt, I want a, a guitarist. I went, OK, I'll, I'll have a think about who I know. And he said, no, I need a guitarist now. And I thought, well... OK, I'll have a think. And he went, no, I want you now. I want you to come down to the studio. So uh, I thought, right, I'll just drop everything. Uh, got in the car, went down there. And I'm in sort of Johnny Rufus' studio. And he's like, oh. like, you know, one of the best studios in the country. And uh, he says, yeah, I'll play on this. And I thought, yeah, right. And we did. And we just had a ball. It was good, good fun, it was. And uh, your general idea of his music, what do you normally think of just the general scale? He's done two albums. in his first, which was quite political. His second one's a bit more sort of grungy rock. Um, what, what do you think of the two albums together? Yeah, I think I think it's growing up musically. It's uh, the first album is just so so nice. Um, it's simple. It tells a message. It's to the point, and you listen to the words. You think, yeah, it's not as simple, is it? It's not. It's deep. And then the music is evolving, uh, and like his revolt is evolving musically and as a person. It's brilliant to see. It's, listen to this stuff, listen to the words, it's good. Let's see how my first memories of music is when I was about five. Um, that would have probably been um, an imagined single in 1980 that was reissued um, by John Lennon. Um, and when I got to, say, probably about eight, my earliest mem memories of the first scene that I got into was probably hip hop, it was Grandmaster Manny Mal, people like that. Um, and just the big massive hip hop scene that, that came over to England from, from America. Um, and you know, and then sort of my brother at the time in, in 83 was into the jam and people like that who I later on got into as I was getting into my teenage years. So I was sort of got into the Who, 
um, loved the Who stuff. Quadrophenia was like one of the biggest iconic albums. You know, to me, it was sort of more of a lifestyle rather than music. Um, and then I got into sort of like the early sort of Britpop sort of years, which was like Oasis and um, The Verve and people like that. But Paul Weller, obviously, <coughs> um, he had sort of a, a a big, a big, a big um, part to play in that as well. Um, he had a massive sort of comeback and sort of got back into Weller and stuff. Um, and always been into hip hop and sort of um, had decks and mixed and stuff. And you know, really, really loved all that sort of music. And I love soul music. And right up to date, I'm sort of into everything. So I'm, you know, there's loads. My record collection consists of God, Bob Dylan. Benton. I know him from the open mic scene in Leamington, uh, open mic nights at places like Robinswell, um, Warwick, the Great Western, the GW Fests and things, I'm just trying to think now. I do know him from um, open mic nights really. Yeah, what he's got to say is really, I don't know, It's not. he's not floundering around it, he's sort of speaking about the real stuff that needs to be spoken about. Um, the subjects are always pretty cutting and hard hitting, but he does it in a way where you can enjoy the music, but then you go, hold on, the lyrics are really deep and meaningful. He's got um, he's got some really good subjects to write about, and it's got some, yeah, it's got some real feeling to it, so it's good. <coughs> yeah, I wrote um, Money to Burn. Um, I wrote that about two years ago. That's going to go on the next album. Um, that song, I don't, know really, I don't really know how that song came about. That's, it, to me personally, um, it's more It's more of a, it's like, it's almost like you've gotten, you know, you're in a position where you've got nothing um, and and the whole world's just closing in on you. Um, and it's a, it's a song really of, of about breaking out of that and and finding somebody that, that you know that you can rely on, in so so to speak. That's what it sort of means to me. Um, but like, and then that's you know then you move on like getting on the train. That that song that song really is. Um, that song's it, it that sort of reminded me of a lot of the times when I've been to Nottingham and played up there for a few friends. Um, Travelling to London, Liverpool, you know, and Brighton, and lots of places where I've been to play music. It's sort of, hence the um, the name really. Getting on a train. It's it's getting on a train when you're skint, and spending hundred pound to get somewhere, out of uh, money that you maybe I don't know got on the dole. That's for your food for the next two weeks. But you love that music that much that you're prepared to die over it. So you'll get on a train and. And, and just go, and who gives a shit about the next couple of weeks, you know. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's, it's sort of a moment of, 
before you go on, it's, it's more like a bit of a buzz, um, which you probably could call nerves, I guess, but like it's more sort of excitement. You know, you can't wait to get out and play to people. Well, I think you don't really, um, you can never sort of eliminate it 100%, but you just, you, you know, as long as you go out and you, you enjoy yourself, then it's, that's, I think, is very important because if you're enjoying yourself, then others will enjoy it, I think. Yeah, playing Matthew Street, playing at the New Cavern was um, just absolutely amazing because it's such a, such a cultural sort of place anyway. Um, there's a lot of music there. Um, people always say if you want to be famous go to London, if you want to make good music go to Liverpool. Um, I tend to sort of agree with that because everybody there is just so into music rather than um, money. Maybe, I mean I think everything that goes on, on on the news or in your life that you look around at and see um, I think just from a human being sort of standpoint, it's quite sickening. So I think as a musician, and it's been this way for years and years, lots of musicians have always found it's their responsibility to write about stuff that's going on in the world. I'm no, you know, I'm, I'm exactly the same. So I'm no different to that. So um, when I write a song like English Terror or Stand Up Against, it's, it's something that's really sort of concerned me for my, you know, for my daughter's future or family's future or my future or the world in general. So I think that it's everybody's responsibility to sort of not sort of sweep it under the carpet, it's to actually think about it a bit more and um, you know try and work out how we're going to try and go forward. God. Apart from me, you bastards, because um, I'm rich. <laughs> Keep me